Dude, I am telling you how to build a hundred million dollars in sales. If you guys will listen to me, I'm gonna make you rich. I'm, te I'm gonna teach hundreds of micro skills all on this call. All you have to do is consciously pay attention. Don't be so casual today. Write everything that I say down so that you can actually start to sell and close everyone. You can't just change your behavior. You have to change your identity. Everybody write that down. If I change my habits, if I change my behavior, if I change any of that it still doesn't matter. You have to change your identity. And one of the things that I have is that I have this crazy identity in which I believe, notice I said I believe, sales, the definition of sales to me is the transfer of belief. That's what sales is to me. Whoever believes the most wins victoriously in every sell. And I have a pretty high level of being sold on my belief. So my identity is anytime I go into any situation, I believe that I'm gonna lock this shit up. I believe I can close anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere, it doesn't matter. No one escapes. I said this, you heard me say Alcatraz, no one escapes, people laugh. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm the prison Alcatraz and if you get around me, it's not like you feel like you can't leave, you don't want to leave. Okay? And by the way, so how so what so sales is the transfer of belief. Okay? Now I'm going to give you guys some simple rules. Okay? But in the beginning, I want you to write these down because I I put these here and I highlighted them because I wanted you to write them down. Number 1, write this down. Kill the old you. You got to kill the old you. If I'm training you today, you got to be open-minded, so you got to kill the old you. Secondly, kill your weakness, okay? I'm going to give you six things to write down. Kill your weakness. Kill the old you. Kill your weakness. Number three, outwork everyone. Doesn't matter what sales tips you learn on this call. If you don't outwork everyone, you're going to become no one, okay? Number four, I'd rather die than be average. I would rather die and not live any more than be average. And by the way, if I had a disability and I couldn't, I, I get that. But if you're healthy and you're watching this, I would rather die than be average, knowing that God gave me the ability to become great and I didn't pursue it. And then number, number five is gonna be, you can't break me. You guys must be unbreakable, unshakable. That's the goal. Hey, remember I said this, you gotta have a new identity, new skill, new beliefs, new all shit, all this stuff, doesn't matter. Don't change your identity, nothing changes. Lastly, go to war with average. Go to war with it. Listen, I'm gonna ask a couple questions. If you're not where you wanna be financially, if you don't have a bunch of paid off assets in your life, if you got credit card debt, you know, if you don't have enough cash in the bank, okay, if, you, if your house isn't paid off, if you're not living in your dream home, go to war with average. The God of this generation is comfort, okay? Don't be comfortable. Like you don't have to do this, but if you do this, I assure you in the era that we live in and with as much mediocrity as crawling over everyone, you will become very successful in your life. Also, write down one more thing before we get into sales. A lot of you are a millimeter away from a great life. You're a millimeter away. Like a lot of you think, man, I'm miles away. No, you're not. You're not miles away. Some people think they gotta change all these things. A lot of the times, dude, it's, it's a very easy change. Change your identity, change your life. And when people say change your identity, let me give you an example. Let's say that I'm somebody that you look up to, because I'm just using me as an example. Let's say David Goggins is. And you say, you know what? I'm just gonna be him now. And people say, well, what do you mean you're not him? No, I'm him now. I, I, I've taken over that identity. And what I did is when I first started self-developing, I took the 20 best entrepreneurs and business owners on planet Earth, and I literally hijacked and stole their brains and stole their identity and built my own. Does that make sense? If you're watching this video right now, I train CEOs, I train business owners, I help companies scale the greatest sales teams on planet 
earth. I have digital training. I do Zoom calls. I do face-to-face -face brotherhood, direct interactions with people that are, that are business owners of a billion dollar company or they're salespeople that are just starting up. If you feel like you want to be coached by me, and I'm just being super clear, and you're like, dude, I want to be coached by you. I want an edge. You're 44 years old, Andy. You're on fire. You get it all in life, but you get underdogs. You get like everybody's qualified to have a great life. I'm running a play. This play isn't working. I want to run a new play. I'm a psycho competitor. I'm obsessed just like you, but I'm not getting those results, but I want to get them. Go down to the description box below on this YouTube video right now. Go down to the description box. You're going to click on a link. It's going to ask you eight questions. And when you answer these eight questions, okay, based on the way that you answer them, if you get qualified to coach with me, I will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. It's that simple. Okay. If it's something that I can help you with, I'm all in and we will crush it. You see people, they like, they like learn like a word track. They learn something, but they don't change. Not going to work. Okay. So, um, let's go through number one. I'm going to reverse sales for you. Most people go sales and then leadership. I tell you guys all the time, sales and leadership will get you rich. I'm going to reverse it. Instead of teaching you sales first, I'm going to teach you leadership first. Because if I teach you to be a leader first, well, you'll sell everyone. When you go to sell someone, are you leading them to make a decision? Yes or no? Yeah. Well, how can you lead someone to make a decision if you're not a leader? Okay. So here we go, ready? Write down the word leadership real big on your piece of paper. Okay, and I'm gonna fire off a bunch of stuff for you guys to think about, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna retrain your brain, ready? So number one, number one thing in leadership is this, self-leadership. And by the way, if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead anyone else. So I just want you to understand this. If you can't keep your word, your customers aren't gonna wanna take your word. There's a, there's a saying, it says in leadership, you can't give someone what you don't have, okay? So go over into leadership and, and, and write this down, state, S-T-A-T-E, S-T-A-T-E, state. It's not the state you live in, like Arizona, it's your state of being. So there's this thing called buying state. Anybody's ever heard of a buyer state? Like you gotta get someone in a buying state to wanna make a decision. So there's this thing when we persuade people when we believe in something, it's called transfer of emotion. I said transfer of belief, but transfer of emotion. Transfer of emotion is getting someone to feel the same way that you feel. Sales 101 starts with leadership. Leadership is you must lead yourself. How do you think? How do you act? How do you operate? How do you believe? If you are, are positive, good vibes, good energy, good buying state in all of those things, you can get your client to do the same thing. So self-leadership, number one, self-leadership. Got to lead yourself. If you don't lead yourself, ain't no one else going to want to be led by you, period. Now, level two, number two, the second pillar, whatever you want to call it. Secret number two, you got to make leaders. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. When I'm talking to someone, number one, Speak, with, to speak to everyone that you talk to with familiarity, as if you've known them your whole damn life. Most people start with sales and they say, all right, so in sales, your goal is to ask questions, to find common ground. You guys have heard this, find common ground with people, and then that way you can build rapport. All right, cool. When you're building rapport and you're asking questions, a lot of the times we don't speak to people with familiarity. And so if we can, get on the same page, the wall slowly comes down and then we build rapport. Dude, I want you guys to talk to people like you've known them your whole damn life. From the second you say hi to people. Who's the leader? You are. Do you know who you are? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to make more leaders? Yes, you do. When you talk to someone else, you talk to them like you've known them your whole life. If any of you guys have ever came and talked to me face to face in person or on the phone, I never took time to get to know you. I automatically talk to you like I've known you your whole life. Everyone that's ever met me knows I speak to everyone with familiarity 25 7, 365. We don't need break in time. Hey, the first two minutes, I got to get them warmed up. Bullshit. The second you say hi to them, talk to them like you've known them your whole life. Leadership, super, super important. Self, number one, leadership, self-lead, self-lead. Number two, 
leading others. And then number three is building leaders to make more leaders. And that is going to be when you guys build your own team, your own business one day. But since we're talking about leadership and we're talking about sales, I want you to write this down. The quality of your life will always come down to the level of your leadership. The quality of your life. I'm going to give you some things that you got to write down. And these things, you must learn. You must memorize them. Okay? The quality of your life will always come down to the level of your leadership. So the life you have now is because of your leadership that you currently have. So if your life isn't very good, it's because you're a shitty leader. By the way, how do we sell more? Become a better leader. Okay? Because you're going to lead people to make a decision. You're going to lead people to believe in you. Okay? You're the leader. All right, number two. Remember this. Every one of you right now, how many of you work for someone else? Raise your hand. Okay? All right, cool. How many of you own your own business? Raise your hand. I need everybody to understand this. Whether you own your own business or whether you work from someone else, it is your business. Listen, I know that you're like, no, this isn't my business. It's somebody else's. I just work there. Listen, if you don't start treating it like it's your business, you're not going to kick ass. Okay? When I sold cars, those were my, that was, those were my cars. That was my lot. Those were my, my building. That was my company. And guess what? Average sales guy sold eight cars a month. I sold 70 to 80. Don't tell me that I would have sold that many acting like a freaking employee. I got a company called the Elliott Group. I got 100 guys that work in my company. Everybody that works in my company owns their own business inside of my business. That is the way it works. That is why we're kicking ass. That's why we're killing it. So my point is, I want you to write this down. Changing the psychology of the leader, changing the psychology of the leader will change the business faster than anything else. Changing the psychology of the leader will change the business faster than anything else. And what does that mean? That means changing your mind. Okay, so underneath that, I want you to write down this. A warrior's deadliest weapon is his mind. A warrior's greatest weapon is his mind. You got to change your mind. You got to change your mindset. You got to change your psychology. And also, changing the psychology of the leader will change the business faster than anything else. That means it'll, you'll get better results. It'll change your numbers. It'll make you more money. But I want you to write this down too. Changing your perspective. Changing the perspective of the leader. A lot of people, they prejudge. I want you to understand why you got to be a leader. Because salespeople are amateurs, leaders aren't. Do listen to me. When I sold and I was a leader, it was like this. Everybody can buy, came to buy, and will buy as long as I do my job. Period. Everybody's a buyer. If you requested information on something, it's because you're a buyer. If you're in front of me on my showroom floor, it's because you're a buyer. If you called in on a phone call, you're a buyer. If I, t if I cold call you on the phone and you talk to me for more than five minutes, you're a buyer. Everybody was a buyer. That's my perspective. Why must you have the baddest ass mindset on planet Earth? Why? Because, dude, the way that you see the client, the way that you see the situation probably is one of the most important things that a leader does. The perspective of the leader must be that they see the way through. There's a, there's a saying, it's called wartime leadership. War, wartime leadership. You can Google it. And it'll talk about Leaders have to make wartime decisions when they're faced with pressure. If you're selling someone, like you have to make quick decisions. You have to move fast. And so you got to be able to make wartime decisions. Okay. Leaders live for a bigger vision than themselves. Leaders live for a bigger vision than themselves. Listen to me. What does that mean? That means when you're going to sell someone, okay, you got to be living for something that's bigger than yourself. I always say this all the time. Whoever cares the most about the client wins victoriously in every, in every cell. So whether the client cares more about themselves than you care about them, or whether you care about the client more than they care about themselves, whoever cares the most wins, right? Guys, as you guys hear what I'm telling you, you have to become this. Please don't listen to this for entertainment. Change your identity, skill stack. I'm, te I'm gonna teach hundreds of micro skills all on this call all you have to do is consciously pay attention don't be so casual today write everything that i say down so when we're done number one you can watch it again 
but so that you can actually start to sell and close everyone. I want you to get big results. All right, the, the scarcest resource, the scarcest means the most valuable resource in the world is leadership. There's a saying I always say to people, so if the scarcest resource in the world is leadership, I always tell people, if you wanna increase your income, you gotta increase your value. And how do you increase your value? Scarcity. If you have something there's not a lot of, is it worth more? Yup. What's the scarcest resource? Leadership. If you guys will listen to me, I'm gonna make you rich. L listen, the rest of the world, they're not gonna teach you this way because they don't fucking know. I watch people run around and run their mouth making a half a million a year or even seven figures. Dude, I am telling you how to build a hundred million dollars in sales because I am living proof of it. I don't care where you are. I care where I'm going to take you. So please don't take your current situation and say, oh, well, I, I can't use that where I'm at now. You're such an idiot. It's like you want to stay in the same place forever. Do you want to grow or not? Everything that I tell you, you have to know to become the greatest. Okay, there's two rules to business. Rule number one, don't ever let anyone else know your business better than you. I'm teaching you sales so that literally everyone in the world, you'll know it better than them. Rule number two, try to figure out how to kick your own ass every day. You guys gotta find the holes in you as I'm talking. Let's keep rolling. Okay, this is a good one. Leadership is not a position. So like people that are managers are like, oh, I'm the leader. You're not the leader, okay? A leader is a mentor. A leader is somebody that people look up to and want to be like. If you're watching this video right now, I train CEOs, I train business owners, I help companies scale the greatest sales teams on planet Earth. I have digital training, I do Zoom calls, I do face-to-face -face brotherhood, direct interactions with people that are, that are business owners of a billion dollar company or they're salespeople that are just starting up. If you feel like you wanna be coached by me, and I'm just being super clear, and you're like, dude, I wanna be coached by you, I want an edge, you're 44 years old, Andy, you're on fire. You get it all in life, but you get underdogs. You get like everybody's qualified to have a great life. I'm running a play, this play isn't working, I wanna run a new play, I'm a psycho competitor, I'm obsessed just like you, but I'm not getting those results, but I want to get them. Go down to the description box below on this YouTube video right now. Go down to the description box. You're gonna click on a link. It's gonna ask you eight questions. And when you answer these eight questions, okay, based on the way that you answer them, if you get qualified to coach with me, I will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. It's that simple, okay? If it's something that I can help you with, I'm all in and we will crush it. A leader is the example. A boss is not a leader. So leadership is not a position. It's the skill of influence. Make sure you write that down. This is a big one, don't miss it. Leadership is the skill of influence and I'm gonna tell you what that means. I've accumulated a vast majority of my wealth by the ability to influence and persuade. Most of my money was made in sales because I can influence or persuade. Okay, now I want you to do me a favor, right? Let's write down a couple things. We'll go off to the side of the page and I'm gonna kinda dial this in because I hope to show you many of these things before this call ends today. Number one, influence, persuade, paint pictures, tell stories. Got it? Guys gotta learn how to tell stories. Gotta be a great storyteller on planet Earth, promise you, okay? Paint pictures, tell stories, sell ideas. Gotta be able to sell ideas, sell situations. Man, dude, if you can take those six things I just showed you, unstoppable, unstoppable, okay? All right, to influence the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and the actions of another human being is called leadership. Ready, write that down. To influence, hey, you guys wanna know how to sell? This is leadership, to influence the thoughts. What do you gotta own? Their thoughts, their emotions, their actions, their feelings of another human being. That's freaking leadership. You guys are gonna be so freaking dangerous. I'm not even joking. Dude, I'm gonna get into some really cool shit as we go, but this stuff right here, this is real sales 101. And by the way, everybody write this down. Anything that can be taught is a skill. So like, if I'm teaching it to you, it's a skill. If I can do it, it's a skill. If I can do it, you can do it.
All right, so the biggest challenges for most businesses or individual, doesn't matter which one you are, is that the leader, which is you, they think they've maxed out what's possible. So listen, once you think that this potential, this thing, this income is maxed out, here's what happens. Innovation dies. Innovation is what makes you a badass. Innovation dies, and guess what? Your negative ass, low self-limiting belief controls you, okay? You gotta make sure in your head, you never think that you're maxed out. I literally walk into companies, and all I do is replace the person in charge. I don't want to, but sometimes I got to. Why? Because the person in charge, when I say, yeah, why don't we do this or that? And they say, well, no, we can't do that. You don't understand. It's like, they know every reason why I can't grow. So you know what I do? I just replace them with someone that goes, damn, I can blow this shit up. Look at this crazy opportunity. And then they come in, they don't think that it's maxed out. Innovation, innovation is going through the roof and they blow the business up. How many times have we seen this? All the time. You know what I know? Guys can always get in better shape. You can always make more money. You can always fall more in love with, with someone in a relationship. It's unlimited, man. No limits, no caps, okay? So that's the power of a great leader. We're about halfway through leadership and then I'm gonna run sales the rest because that's what this is about. But if you missed the leadership part, I'm gonna tell you this. If you guys wanna make a lot of money, you gotta stand out, you gotta be different than others, and you gotta make relationships that other people can't. When people meet you, they make a decision whether they want to be like you, whether they want to trust you, whether they want to believe in you or not. You got to be a leader. If you're a leader, they'll love you. All right, three things that you must know. Let's write this down. Three things you must know. By the way, like this is like, I want you to think about your life right now. Three things you must know. Number one, there's treasure in my business. What does that mean? Do you think what you're currently doing, you think you can make a lot of money? Yes or no? You think, I mean, can you? If you don't think there's treasure in your business, go work for a company that there is treasure. Like, you can't have hope in a future if you don't think there's hope. So, number one, you must believe there's treasure in your business. Number two, you gotta believe that you'll find it. So ask yourself, will I find it? Because look, I don't give a shit if Sean can find it, can I find it? Me, that's what matters. Okay, is there treasure in my business? Number two, will I find it? Number three, is it worth it? Dude, you gotta believe it's worth it, man. I know so many people, they just, they just, they just, they don't think it's worth it. Do listen, number one, I knew there was treasure in this industry that I got in. Number two, I knew that I would find it. I didn't think it was gonna be easy. I didn't think it was gonna be fast, but I knew I was gonna find it. And then most importantly, I knew it was worth it. guys. I knew if I got good enough, I knew I could get any, I knew I could get my dream life. I knew it was worth it. Guys, you know what? You know why you wanna pay attention today? Because nobody else wants you to fucking make it more than I do. If that ain't enough reason, I don't know what to tell you, okay? A lot of people, they want a better life, somebody gives them an opportunity, they don't even pay attention. By the way, it's hard to learn, okay? The reason why we spend so much time doing stupid shit, we don't learn. So what I'm teaching you today, fall in love with learning. This will break your bloodline. So I want you to do this. We're gonna play a game and I want you to put, imagine a competitor that you would never wanna go up against. Underline never, okay? So imagine a competitor that you would never want to go up against, all right? Now, this is how they are. They're focused, they're persistent, they're relentless. They're always learning, always improving. This competitor says no to everything that doesn't make him stronger. You guys know what he looks like. You guys know how he acts. You know who he associates with. You know who he runs with. Now become him. That's called a psycho competitor. You can't just be a leader. You gotta be a leader that's obsessed. You gotta be a psycho competitor. All right, so the question I asked basically is are you going up against competition competitors that are tough, that are great, and that's the only way you grow. Dude, listen, so I'm gonna go back to 2019. I got in the automotive, number one, 
2019, I quit my job. I wanted to start making sales training. I went around to all the dealers. I'd been in a dealer for a long time. And you say, what if you don't have any competitors? You're never in a vacuum with no competition. Never. If you, if you don't have any competitors, then you'd be a billionaire, right? Someone's got the money. And, and if you don't have any competitors and you're not making a lot of money, then you're in, you're in a market with no money, which I don't believe that even exists. So I just want everybody to know, you're never in a vacuum with no competition. Don't ever think that. I hear people say, we're the best. Really? How do, how, how do you measure that data? Because you think you are, because the customer told you that? Is it real data? Guys, nine-figure sales training company? That's fucking data. And by the way, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm telling you how I got there so you can get to where you want to go. 39 years old, I decided to start a sales training company. And guess what? All the car dealerships were training with, you know who? Grant Cardone. Well, guess what? I would take Grant's ass out. Well, guess how I did it? You guys ready for the strategy? I created free YouTube videos for one year straight for free. Listen, listen, they were free. And I made sure that they were better than Grant's paid training. Oh, wait a minute. What'd you say, Andy? Okay. I said, I'm going to start a sales training company. I literally went and I recorded YouTube videos that were better than Grant's paid training and I gave them away for free. And people were all watching them everywhere. And they're like, why are we, why are we paying for Grant shit when this guy shit's free and it's better? I mean, guess what? I built a ton of raging fans. I gave a lot of value. I over-delivered. I mean, guess what? I came out with the training program and I said, hey, I've got thousands of training videos. It's all structured. It's A to Z for a new guy to come in, phone skills, you know, face-to-face -face sales, overcoming objections, confidence building mindset. I've got it all broke out real easy for the whole company to log in. It's $19.97 a month. You get unlimited users and passwords, usernames and passwords. And guess what? We signed up 10 thousand companies sorry grant my bad anyways with that being said who are you going up against by the way i like to have fun guys by the way i have nothing against grant the guy is an overcomer built a big business and i've watched him a lot of my life but you know what i know nobody's too big for you to go against everybody write this down underdogs versus goliaths i want to tell you something real quick this is beautiful i know that you guys probably watched patrick bet david some of you guys if you've ever went to the vault and you've said in his three-day training in the vault, he talks about underdogs and Goliaths. And he talks about Goliaths are so big, they can't move fast. It, they, it takes forever to put new systems, they're afraid, they got a big brand now, everything's gotta go through a board. Um, you know, underdogs, a committee, uh, underdogs can just do whatever they want. <laughs> like, like we're broke. So like we just, it's like turning a cruise ship, right? Guys, if you're in the middle of an ocean, and you're to turn a cruise ship. Imagine if you turn the wheel as hard as you could. Is it gonna turn the cruise ship real fast? No, it's a big ass cruise ship. But what if you're in a little boat and you turn the boat wheel? Dude, you can flip that bitch around really quick. Dude, that's why I love being an underdog. Now, I built a big business, but I still operate as an underdog, okay? Everybody please promise me something. I'm gonna make you rich, unless you quit. If you quit, you'll never get there. But if you don't quit and you listen to what I say, you'll get there. I always want you to stay a broke person with money. I always want you to believe in people. I want you to understand a specialty that I have. No matter who I'm talking to, no matter how much money they have, no matter what kind of status they have, I just love people, man. I just believe, man. I'm just, I'm just curiously fascinated with how people can change so quickly. I did it. I'm living proof. I see other people do it. I love people. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. COVID was one of the best things that ever happened for all of us. And I don't mean with the sickness. I mean, like, people had to wear a mask and stand six feet apart. People were made for communion. There's this drug, if anybody want to look it up, it's called oxytocin. It's the love drug. It's like when you're close to someone. Like, if we're sitting there, a girl and a, a, girl and a guy, and the guy, and the girl puts her hand on the guy, and holds his hands or rubs his arm, oxytocin starts to flow through his body. It's called the love drug.
makes you feel loved, makes you feel good. When COVID came, oxytocin disappeared. I'm gonna tell you something. I know people were made for communion, and so do you guys. You know people were made to be together. You know that people wanna associate with other people. You know we're, we're social animals, right? No matter what you say, we're super social. Cool thing. Since we're all social animals, COVID happened, people got disconnected, customer service went through the shitter. You guys all know this, you guys saw it. You guys felt it, you guys went through it yourself. People, a lot of them got paid more money than they ever got paid because the market was three times better than it's ever been. And then the market adjusted and then those people got depressed because, and now they're blaming the market when they never got better, they got free money. There's a lot of things that happened the last four years. You know what I know? People were made for connection. They were made for communion. They were made to, to be built up by other people. I tell people all the time, I was like, if you get in front of me, I'm gonna brainwash your ass to feel powerful, feel strong, I'm gonna brainwash you to feel that you can, feel like you can do anything. I'm gonna make you feel so amazing that honestly, you're never gonna wanna be away from my side. That right there is what I need you guys to be able to do. To understand that this world right now is so selfish, what's in it for me, I'm not gonna show people love unless I'm guaranteed to get this. There's this old saying I say in sales, um, people gotta prove that they can buy before I give my best. You guys, is, is anybody in a business where somebody has to get qualified? And then if they do have to get qualified, normally the salesperson won't give them their best until they know they have a buyer on their hands. It's like, hey, how you doing? Okay, cool, I need you to fill this out, fill this out. And they can't buy, they're like, okay, well, you know, find someone that can help you and, you know, come back. Oh, fill this out. Oh, yeah, we got, we got one. Hey guys, what's going on, man? Hey, my name's Andy, hope you're doing amazing. You know, you guys are, like family to me. Oh shit, now that you see I can buy, now you're giving me your best. Oh, okay. Dude, screw that. People don't have to prove to you that they can buy before you give them your best. And so my point is, is that when you treat people amazing in a world where people literally treat people like shit, guys, let's think about it for a minute. Divorce rates are at 70% right now. You know how many families got up lives, I hate to say this. You know how bad they could use just a good positive person in their life? Dude, if you're, if you're communicating with somebody and you say, Andy, but like, what do you mean? I'm not a counselor. No, but you're also, you're a good person and you can talk to someone and you can turn their day around. You can, hey, you can give them oxytocin by complimenting them, by being nice to them, by being kind to them. Dude, if you can turn someone's day around, do you think those people will make an exception just one time to buy something from you when they when they actually weren't going to do it? Yeah. Learn all the word tracks you want. The more someone loves you, the higher the odds are in your favor for them to buy, okay? Listen, remember what I told you guys? Total recreation, baby. Kill off the old, come in with the new, okay? Don't be one of these salespeople with commission breath running around, sounding like you gotta sell something every day. Dude, you'll sell a shitload of stuff, you can make connections. By the way, the chemicals, remember I said this, dopamine, like it's a hit that people get, like when you treat them good, when you make them feel good, you know, when they get a new product, endorphins, right, those two are powerful, and then oxytocin and serotonin. These are chemicals your body releases. Your job as a salesperson, and I'm not gonna geek out on it, but it's to be so good at what you do that it releases chemicals in your customer's body and makes them feel good when they're around you. Does everybody understand? Listen, I didn't make human beings, God did, and God made it to where they can release chemicals when certain things happen. So, just wanna tell you guys, like, transfer of emotion, how about transfer of chemicals? If you're watching this video right now, I train CEOs, I train business owners, I help companies scale the greatest sales teams on planet Earth. I have digital training, I do Zoom calls, I do face-to-face -face brotherhood, direct interactions with people that are, that are business owners of a billion dollar company or they're sales people that are just starting up. If you feel like you wanna be coached by me, and I'm just being super clear, and you're like, dude, I wanna be coached by you, I want an edge, you're 44 years old, Andy, you're on fire, you get it all in life, but you get underdogs, you get like everybody's qualified to have a great life. I'm running a play, this play isn't working, I wanna run a new play, I'm a psycho competitor, I'm obsessed just like you, but I'm not getting those results, but 
I want to get them. Go down to the description box below on this YouTube video right now. Go down to the description box. You're gonna click on a link. It's gonna ask you eight questions. And when you answer these eight questions, okay, based on the way that you answer them, if you get qualified to coach with me, I will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. It's that simple, okay? If it's something that I can help you with, I'm all in and we will crush it. I want you to write this down. When I see something I want, I gotta get it. This is a leadership quality. When I see something I want, I gotta get it. And then underneath that, you gotta write down, know who the hell you are and know your value. You gotta know your value, guys. I know a lot of people that don't know their value and they don't know who they are. I see it every day. I'm 44 years old at 39 when I decided to start my own business. I don't, everybody's a different age, so forget the age part. If you wanna make more money, if you wanna go to another level in life, if you wanna go to an income you've never been at before, you're going to have to become something you've never been. The best way for me to say it is you're going to have to kill off the old you to get the new you. Life is like a set of government building doors. You can't keep your old life and get your new one. You either have to go to the new one or give up your old one or go back to the old one. If you walk to a government building, there's two sets of doors. First set, second set. This is how it works, government building. You walk up to the first set of doors, they open. You go to walk through, the second set of doors won't open until you completely get your whole body through the first set of doors they're not both gonna open for you. And so some of you, you're like, well, I'll try this. You either will become this or you won't. It's just the way it works. I think a lot of you, no matter how old you are, you can create a rebirth in your life right now just by changing. So I wanna go into, um, I hope that helps to some of you guys. When I saw that, I was like, bro, like I'm gonna go through that, but as a human being. And I did, like like, like my body, like my body fat percentage. I don't have any body fat. I Listen, I, <laughs> Just so everybody's aware, like completely aware, like I wanna say this, what you become, you attract. So some of you want to attract more, but you won't become more attractive. Rest in peace, old Andy Elliott. He is gone. And guess what? I built the life I always wanted that everyone said I couldn't have. I wanna tell you guys something, listen to me. This isn't just skill mental for your brain, okay? This is total recreation. You gotta become more attractive. Can I ask you a question? Will you spend more time with a more attractive person than you will with an uglier person, yes or no? I know, everybody's gonna be like, Andy's an asshole. You won't believe what he said on this call. He's the biggest dick. I know, I just say what everybody's thinking but no one wants to say because nobody wants to get freaking, you know, hated on. I get hated on all the time so I might as well just say it. I'm not, hey, I, I love people that are ugly, but guess what? As you take care of your body, you get more attractive. Like, I didn't like me when I was that guy. Like, I changed. And so I want you to understand this. To sell is to have confidence, self-esteem, self-belief, and you gotta have those things by liking you. And by the way, when you really like who you are and you're really proud of yourself, you just go do more, okay? You want, you, you, by the way, you think bigger, you have bigger dreams. Guys, I can run you through just an array of all the great things that happened when I really started taking good care of myself, okay? So everybody, if you wanna write something down, to get more attractive, it's gonna be mental, right? Okay, but you're gonna to have to do physical to get stronger and mental. So it goes physical, mental, business. If I can get physically fit, I can get mentally right, and then I can blow up my business. That's the way it works. All right, so let's go into the art of communication. You guys ready? Art of communication, everybody write this down. Being a master communicator. This is probably one of my favorite topics. This right here is something that most people don't know how to do, which I'm gonna show you how to do. Does anybody know what framing is? When you frame someone to give you the answer that you want from them? I can make anyone give me the answer I want. Now, I'm gonna tell you how. It's not because I'm Andy Elliott. No, it's because I use my words and play them very well to get me the answer I want. Okay, so everybody write this down, word play. We must play our words in our favor. When you watch a movie, by the way, we play our words to advance the sell forward or to close the sell, okay? Now, when you're watching someone sell, most of the time, that salesperson can't control the answers, can't control whether they get a yes or a no. I can. 
Okay, and I wanna show you guys how, but first I'm gonna tell you what a master communicator is. Number one, a master communicator is somebody that makes it easy to say yes to. I'd, I'd like you to write that down because you're gonna, you're gonna understand how I do it here in a minute. Make it easy to say yes to. Secondly, they make it hard to say no to. Okay, so it's three things. They make it easy to say yes to, make it hard to say no to, and they make it the customer's idea every single time. I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna show you guys like how I kind of frame this stuff. So when I sold cars, right, there were some really like common objections that we got every day. I say this to people all the time that like sales is like the level of an intelligence that a human being has. If you don't have intelligence, I, I don't want to train you. Okay. So I'm going to give an example. So I'm talking about, I'm talking about Javier, right? And Javier, if I pulled up a red card, let's say I pulled up a red card, red card goes up and I slap Javier in the face. He would be like, red card slap. Okay, if I pulled up another red card and my hand went up and I slapped him again, he'd be like, son of a bitch. I'm like, watch the pattern. Red card, hand, slap. Red card, hand, slap. Most salespeople get same objections every day and they never figure out how to duck. They never figure out how to get intelligent, learn how to overcome it. You, you should start ducking. I see a red card, you slap me. Next red card goes up, my head goes down. Pretty common sense, right guys? Everybody think, top five objections you get in your industry right now. So I wanna go back and I wanna play mine. Are you ready? So, so when I sold cars when I was younger and then I'll move to any of your industries and I'm gonna show you how to frame anybody to get the answers you want. So the common objections I got was when someone was on the lot, notice they weren't inside the building yet. They were on the lot and they would say, I need to think about it after the test drive. That's one. The second one was when we were inside and I showed them the numbers and then they would say, I need to think about it inside at the table with numbers. Does that make sense? And then there was another one. People would call me and they would say, hey Andy, do you still have that X, Y, and Z pickup truck? And I would say, yeah. And they would say, oh, okay, cool. What's your best price, right? And then there was another one, they would ask, Andy, what's my payment gonna be? And then there was another one. They would say, hey Andy, after we're on the lot. And they'd say, I got a couple more cars to go look at, I'm gonna get back with you. Now, let's go through them. I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. I can get the answers to every one of these, okay? Somebody says, hey Andy, we need to go home and think about it. I say, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information, not to think about it. What I'd like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers so when you go home, you truly have something to think about. Would that be fair? Can I get that for you? Thank you guys so much. Boom, I would pull them in. When I was sitting on the pencil and they would say I need to think about it, I would say hey, I totally understand. I've been doing this for a long time. When somebody says they need to think about it, what I've learned is it's either one of two things. Number one, you're no longer interested in the vehicle, but I don't think that's it because we wouldn't be together for an hour and a half if you didn't like the car. So it leads me to believe it has to be the second part of the deal, that something's concerning you within the numbers of the deal. So Javier, what is concerning you the most? Is it the price, the payment, or the trade-in? Which one? And they'd be like, the price. I'll take them to a price close, okay? I would need to, because you can't overcome, I need to think about it. You gotta find the real problem and then close that problem. These were the objections I heard all the time. Somebody's on the phone. They're like, hey Andy, do you have that truck? I'm like, yeah, I've got the truck. And they're like, hey Andy, what's my payment gonna be? Notice, I didn't say, uh, um, oh, I can't give you that. Uh, come in and, uh, dude, call a car dealership. You'll shit your pants. Guess what? They say, Andy, what's my payment gonna be? I say, you ready? I'm so glad you asked that. If you guys train with me, you guys already know. I own this shit. I'm so glad you asked that. Our, our, our company used licensed finance, uh, uses a very professional li uh, fi licensed finance department that deals, and by the way, I want you to understand this. Write down the top five objections that you have in your industry and you should be able to quote them word for word. It's called the five by five. Five different ways to handle the top five objections, okay? So like whatever yours is, if it's like, oh, I need to get another estimate, I need to get another, you know, whatever. Like whatever they ask, it's like you gotta do five by five. But I'm giving you an example. When I was in the automotive space, I'm going back a long time ago. I literally walked around the store. I made 50 to 80 grand a month and there was guys not making 50 to 80 grand a year. And you know what? I would walk up to them and I would skill test them and I would say, hey, I need to think about it. And they would say, um, ah, uh, whatever. 
okay? So now what I do is that I use words and I figure out how to write out words and I, I use word play, how to play words to frame a client, to have them give you the, the, the answer that you're looking for. Now everybody listen to me, okay? You've gotta be able to talk through a conversation without a script, without a word track, okay? You gotta learn the art of communication. You gotta learn the art of speaking. You gotta learn the art of, you know, getting along with somebody and building common ground with them. Like, I get all that. But but if, if I was in a solar company, does anybody sell solar? Is there any solar salespeople? Okay, listen, let's say someone sold solar. Okay, uh, Carlos Ruiz, Ruiz, Ruiz. Here, jump on with me. I want to show you something for a minute. What's up, bud? How you feeling? Good? All good, bud. You? Okay, are you ready? I'm going to role play with him. Let's say, let's say he's a customer. Ready? Carlos, you speak English? Yeah. Okay, I'm watching you. All right, so Carlos, ready? Knock, knock. You open the door, right? Yeah. Okay, right when you open the door? I'll say, hey, how you doing, sir? My name is Andy Elliott. I'm with ABC Solar. My company's been allocated to this area because research shows in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are gonna double or triple. Sir, I've got two quick questions and then I'll be on my way unless you'd like some additional information. Does that sound fair? Yeah, sure. Okay, beautiful. Question number one, do you believe that you'll, you'll use energy all the days of your life? You see your lights, everything that's operating, it's ran off electricity. Do you believe you'll use energy forever or do you ever see yourself running your house off candles? Probably energy, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Question number two, do you believe inflation is real? Yes or no? Do you think things are yeah. costing more money? 100%. Okay, cool. Well, since you're going to use energy all the days of your life and you believe inflation is real, if your current energy company was to triple your utility bill, you would have to pay for it or they'd shut your electricity off. Let me ask you a question, Car Carlos. If there was a secondary energy option in which you could qualify for, a secondary energy option in which you could qualify for, that would allow you to save money and be inflation proof. Would you wanna know about it? Yeah, of course. Awesome. Carlos, my name is Andy Elliott. I'm with ABC Solar. My job is to get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it, which are you, the homeowners. All I need to do is just to see your utility bill for a minute, if you can pull it up on your phone, or if you have a, a paper copy in your house, and I'll let you know if you qualify for the savings. Does that sound fair? Yep, let me get it. Okay, watch, watch, watch. So, watch what I did. Number one, I said make it easy to say yes to, right? I know a couple things, real quick. Carlos doesn't want me on his porch. You guys gotta understand, selling is all the same. Carlos doesn't want me on his porch. So I've got to get my point across in 30 seconds or less. So rule number one is that if you're in sales, you got to get your point across in 30 seconds or less. You got to, you got to be really good with wordplay. And when I go to Carlos's door, right, when he opens the door, I'm not going to shake his hand because people don't shake people's hand right when they come to your house. So I'm going to hit him with a wave. And then when I tell him my name, I'm going to put my hand on my heart. Why? Because I'm a good American guy. Hey, Carlos, Andy Elliott. Hey, my company's been allocated to this area, and I said research shows. Everybody, two great sayings that I want you to write down. Number one, research shows. Number two, what we've learned. I could say, hey, Carlos, what we've learned is that in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are gonna double or triple, okay? So listen, I've got two quick questions, and then I'll be on my way unless you'd like some additional information. Does that sound fair? Okay, everybody write this down. Does that sound fair? It's a great line to use on anything. Dude, if whatever you say makes sense, people aren't gonna be like, no, that's not fair. It's like, I love it. It's like the cheat code to everything. Does that sound fair? But I want everybody to understand something. This is super important, okay? That the art of communication, for some reason, is dead in this, in this era, okay? Like, people can't look at people in the eyes anymore. You know, people don't shake a hand. I mean. You guys know what the ironclad handshake is, right? That's like where you reach out, shake someone's hand, and you give them your word. Guys, I want everybody to, to put themselves in my shoes. Let's all put each other in the same pair of shoes for a minute. We went to go to do business with somebody, and we asked them to do X, Y, and Z for us. And the guy goes, okay, Andy, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z. You've got yourself a deal. I'm gonna take care of all of it, right? And I say, you got yourself a deal and we put our hand out to shake their hand, and then they said, I don't know, I don't wanna shake your hand. I'll do everything, I just don't wanna shake your hand. 
How would you feel? I wouldn't do it. You say, well, he said he's going to do everything for you. They're going to put in a contract. I wouldn't do it. I like shaking people's hands. It's, it's a part of our life. It's what we do. You guys got to understand something. People don't look at people in the eye anymore. You know, make, make people feel significant. Make them feel important. Make them feel like they matter, right? Eye contact, what does that mean? Dude, I shake people's hands every day. People don't even know how to shake a hand. I, I, I talk to people, people don't even look at me in the eye. I'm like, I'm always like, dude, I'm right here. I'm right here. And by the way, listen, I wanna tell you something. When, when you're telling somebody something, if you look away, it makes the other person think that you're thinking about what to say next, okay? By the way, also another thing you need to know is that if somebody's like, Andy, what's your best price? And I'm like, it's like, why the fuck you swallow? Gay swallowed the whole time. All of a sudden I asked what the best price is and now you're swallowing. It's like, so, so I'm like, in sales, you can't change your state. You, li listen, if somebody asks what's your best price, I'm gonna give everybody the greatest thing to say, to say first. Hey, can I get a better deal? What's your best price? I want you to write this down. I'm so glad you asked that. Like, whatever you're gonna say, just start it out. Don't say, uh, well, don't say that. Dude, say, I'm so glad you asked that, okay? And by the way, you could, you could create something that's like, hey, I'm so glad you asked that. Like, what we do here is actually a little bit different. And then you could explain your pricing policy, why you do what you do. I mean, listen, it's, it's 2024, sir. It's the era of, of transparency. We've learned that the cat and mouse game, marking stuff up and bringing it back down, right? It doesn't build trust and it doesn't build further relationships than just today. So our customers have actually told us that they would like a one-stop shop, full transparency up front, get the best price up front. Look, if I marked it up, you know, three grand, turn around and dropped it back down three grand, even though you felt like you won, would that be trustworthy or respectful? Absolutely not. See, we're looking for a further relationship than just today. Mr. Ted, have I offended you in any way, in any way at all, by giving you my best price up front? No? Thank goodness. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Dude, such a good one. Have I offended you in any way at all by giving you my best price up front? Remember this. It's 2024. I would write this down. It's 2024. It's the era. It's the age of transparency. Our customers have told us. By the way, I didn't say that you told me but you're gonna put yourself in my customer's shoes. I can say our customers have told us that they would prefer to get the best price up front. Everybody says they're sick of playing the cat and mouse game. Mark it up, bring it down. And then I say, even though that people feel like they win, they still don't feel respected or trustworthy. And, and so like, I want you to understand there's some language that you guys can use in your industry, okay? If you're watching this video right now, I train CEOs, I train business owners, I help companies scale the greatest sales teams on planet Earth. I have digital training, I do Zoom calls, I do face-to-face -face brotherhood, direct interactions with people that are, that are business owners of a billion dollar company or they're sales people that are just starting up. If you feel like you wanna be coached by me, and I'm just being super clear, and you're like, dude, I wanna be coached by you, I want an edge, you're 44 years old, Andy, you're on fire. You get it all in life, but you get underdogs. You get like everybody's qualified to have a great life. I'm running a play, this play isn't working, I wanna run a new play, I'm a psycho competitor, I'm obsessed just like you, but I'm not getting those results, but I want to get them. Go down to the description box below on this YouTube video right now. Go down to the description box. You're gonna click on a link. It's gonna ask you eight questions. And when you answer these eight questions, okay, based on the way that you answer them, if you get qualified to coach with me, I will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. It's that simple, okay? If it's something that I can help you with, I'm all in and we will crush it. And by the way, master communicator. Make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, make it the client's ID every single time. Your goal is to create traps. And by the way, notice this. I wanna say one more thing. Notice how I said, I said, if your current utility company was to triple your utility bill, you would have to pay it or else they would turn your, your energy off. And I said, and I didn't say, so if you qualified for solar, would you take it? No, I said, if there was a secondary energy option in which you could qualify for that would allow you to be inflation proof and save money, I bet you'd wanna know about it, right? Yeah, see, frame, use different language. So everybody write this down, I gotta learn new language. Guys, 
in, in your industry, you can't sound like everyone else, okay? One of the things that I did when I sold cars is that like, and I'm going back to when I was younger because like I was in the car business for 21 years and then I literally got into the self-development, teaching people how to sell. I learned every industry out there, mastered it. And guys, I mean, I have 500,000 paying customers per month. I have 10,000 companies. I want everybody to know this. If I can give one thing to all of you, it's to let you borrow the courage to go for everything you want. Let's make sure that we, we're saying stuff right in our head. So one thing is dreams, one thing is goals. A dream is when, like Ted says, you know what, like that would be nice to have that. Or one day that would be cool if I could have something like that. That's a dream language. You don't wanna use dream language. You wanna use goal language. Goal language is, I'm going to become as good as Tony Robbins. That's gonna be me. Listen, that's gonna be me. Like, like we're here, that's gonna be me. Okay, maybe different industry, that's gonna be me. I'm gonna make that kind of money. I'm gonna have that life. I'm gonna have that kind of impact. Like, that's gonna be me. Oh, like, you, you see somebody on a vacation, you're like, man, that looks like a badass vacation. You say, no, I'm taking that vacation. That's my vacation. Like, that was things that I said, because action and execution will follow that kind of thinking, okay? And, and, and listen, guys, I know you heard me say this, but you're the gatekeeper to your mind, okay? So if you got any shit in your mind, you let it there, not me, I didn't do it, okay? The economy didn't do it, the market didn't do it, your boss didn't do it, your wife didn't do it, you did it. You gotta let it come in, okay? So anyways, let's move around, let's operate a little bit. Um, who's in sales, somebody raise your hand. What's going on, What's, go Andy? What's going on, Courtney? All right, what do you do? I sell cars. Well, for about the next two weeks, and I'll be out there with you guys. Okay, good. But you currently sell cars. And then what are you going to go do? Uh, solar. Okay. Right now, you sell cars, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. How long have you been selling cars for? Uh, three months. Okay, are you ready? Let's say, me yeah. and, let's say I go on a test drive. Okay, I go on a test drive with you on a 2018 Nissan Altima. We get out of the car, okay, and you're like, hey Andy, if I can get the deal right, would you be happy to take it home? You asked me to buy the car, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I say, hey, I appreciate it, but I got a couple more cars I'm gonna go look at, I'm gonna get back with you, go. Hey, I totally understand you got a couple more cars to look at. Now let's say hypothetically, you went out, you drove all three of those other cars you came to look at, and my car was the last one that you came to check out. This gorgeous 2024 uh, Chevy Camaro, white interior, gorgeous rims, and I was the last one you were with. Now, would it be the vehicle itself, regardless of the deal, or would it be the best deal possible I can get for you today? Okay, good job. Okay, now listen, I wanna tell everybody something real quick, okay? Courtney, I want you to listen to me. And I'm gonna tell you, number one, I have mad respect for you, but I'm gonna tell you how to get good really quick. Everybody, listen. Mm -hmm. So Courtney, it's a word track that I wrote when I was in automotive, and it works every time. If somebody's like, they drive my Altima, or whatever, Lexus, whatever, it doesn't matter. They drive my car, and you're like, I got another one I wanna go look at. Dude, I use the same saying. I say, hey, I totally understand. Notice I always start out with, I totally understand. Hey, I gotta go look at this other car. I totally understand. Listen, let's say you'd already gone and seen all those other vehicles. I don't care if there's 10 of them. Let's say you drove every single one of them. And then let's pretend that mine was the last one you went and looked at. My beautiful 2018 Nissan Altima, black leather interior, pearl white, rims, roof, everything you want, navigation. This was the last one you went and looked at. Listen, after seeing every single vehicle, all of them, in the end, after seeing them all, what would be the deciding factor on which one you'd probably end up going with? Look, would it be the car itself, regardless of the deal, or would it be the great deal that the dealership was willing to give you? Which one? And see, Courtney, what he's doing is that he is going through his head and thinking about a word track. Okay, am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now watch. Courtney, when you're going through it, in the beginning, it's a script. Your goal is to learn it so well that it doesn't become a script and it's just the way you talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? So anytime that you are learning, anytime, your team must trash the script and learn it so well that it's not a script anymore. 
no scripts. People don't like people that are scripted. So, so I want to tell you guys how to do it. And by the way, Courtney, I'm proud of you. You did a good job, okay? Uh, I mean, seriously, much love. Okay, listen, so I'm going to tell everybody real quick how to build yourself or your team to not sound scripted. Number one, you got to write down what it is that you want people actually saying. Like if it's an objection, if it's how we meet somebody, whatever. If it's a presentation with numbers, they've got to write down what you, someone has to write down what they need to learn because they got to have something to learn from. Now, once they have what they need to learn, you got to write it down again and again. So watch, are you ready? Um, I got this piece of paper, see this? Let's say that this was the script that I have and I got it here, I wrote this out. I have a spiral notebook here. I literally take what's wrote here and I rewrite it here again, again, again. I know, people are like, all right, we get it. No, again, 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 and again. And then between the seventh and the 10th time of writing down the word track, your brain will skip ahead and go, wait a minute, I know this. Then once that happens, okay, then you got to go and you got to look in the mirror and you got to practice saying it to yourself over and over and over and over. And you have to beat the script out of you. Once you beat the script out of you, then you literally record yourself. And by the way, you have to understand this. You ready? So I've got the script, which is what we know, but we're going to talk about it with familiarity like it ain't a script, like we just came up with it on the spot, like we're the professional, we're the expert, we're the trusted guide, we just like, we know the answers, right? Then you wanna use hands, right here. You wanna use head nods, right? You wanna use things like, hey, let's say you've gone and seen all those other vehicles, all of them, right? I don't care if there was 10 of them. It's like our hands are magic. It's called the transfer of emotion, it's called energy, right? Like, listen, and people are always like, oh yeah, that guy, he does this or that. Dude, come look at my bank account. Are you kidding me? I had people make fun of me my whole life because I was alive and I sold. Dude, I'm trying to tell you. And you may say, yeah, but you know, customers, they have all the information they need. They may have all the information they need, but if they're not in a buying state, they're not saying yes, dumbass, okay? Listen, would everybody, believe, would everybody agree that everything is more expensive than it used to be? Hell yeah. Okay, so if shit's more expensive than it used to be, who's gonna take all the pressure out of the deal? The salesman. Who's gonna make it fun? The salesman. And I love what Dean Graciosi said. He said, dude, sales is a service. It's a service. He goes, and if you believe that you have a product that's good for someone else, if you don't sell them on that service, if you really believe you got a good product, number one, they're gonna to continue to struggle. Number two, they're gonna stay the same and they're gonna get no changes in their life. And number three, they could end up at the competition even worse where somebody won't take care of them where you would have. So is it a disservice and disrespectful not to close someone? Yes. I love sales, man, okay? Number one, I wanna give you guys two tips and we'll keep moving around, okay? Tip number one, when you're selling or you're closing, okay, all you're doing is helping people make a decision to help themselves. That's it, it's very simple. You're gonna help people make a decision to help themselves. And then how do you close everybody? by keeping the client's goals at the center of the decision. By the way, I could say that too. I could say, hey Ted, today my goal is just to keep you and your family's goals at the center of the decision, right? So whatever we decision, or whatever decision we make, I just wanna make sure it has your goals, the things that are important to you guys in the center of that. Does that sound fair? Yeah, see guys, you could tie that. Andy, you know, like people always ask me what I do for a living. All I do is help people make a decision to help themselves, okay? That's all I do. Help people make a decision to help themselves, okay? You can use it, you can say it, but you gotta understand it. That's what you guys are doing, okay?